So AI is the talk of the town right now, and whilst it's only a matter of time before our impending doom as a species, until that point, AI has the potential to make our lives so much simpler and so much more productive. And now anyone can build their own AI app without even needing to code in literal seconds. Hey, I'm Adma and I'm a site reliability engineer based in London. And in this video, I wanna show you how you can build your own AI app for whatever use cases that you have, whatever needs you have using AWS Party Rock. I'm gonna split this video into three sections, the idea, the build, and the edit. So let's just get into it. So before we go into the idea section, I just wanna cover what Party Rock actually is. It's a web application that was designed by AWS to allow anyone, regardless of their skill level, to use AI and to build their own apps for their own use cases. It gives you access to the large language models that underpin some of our favorite AI apps, and you can use and select the ones that work best for you. So now let's get into section one, which is the idea. And if I'm being honest, this is gonna be probably the longest part of the process. The build will literally take you seconds as I will show you, but the idea, if you don't already have one for an app that you want to create, is where you'll probably spend most of your time. The thing with AI is that its usefulness and accuracy is tied very much to the prompts that you give it, to the instructions that you provide it. Think about some of the things in your life which would be easier if you could automate or if you could introduce something like an AI assistant and an AI bot to do some of that work for you. And I'm gonna give you some examples from my own life. I could create an AI app that given any AWS service or any cloud service shows me several pieces of information about it. It will explain what the service is, it will give me use cases and applications, potential project ideas, but also tell me the relevance to site reliability engineers, people like me, so that I may know how to potentially use it in my own work and introduce it into my own projects. So another example of a use case from my own life I could think of is taking a YouTube video like this, long form content, and creating me other pieces of relevant content. For example, I could say one of them is five tweets, I need five tweets or X's. Well, I don't know what they're called now, but you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I also want a LinkedIn post. I also want a script or an outline for a TikTok or an Instagram video. I want some images created, right? Like AI generated images that I can also use and associate and attach to some of this text. But the one that we're gonna to explore today is linked to getting your first job in tech or transitioning from one job into another. We're basically gonna create a learning pack and a pathway to getting from one point to another using the app I'm about to build. And let me explain why I've chosen this particular one. Sure, there is lots of information out there about how to become a DevOps engineer, an SRE, you know, a product manager, but this is where we can tailor it to ourselves because the kind of inputs that I'm going to ask for or the inputs that I'm going to build this app around are things like the interest or the aspirational job that you're looking to get, but also your skill level, where are you starting from? You're available, like your free time. Like if you're gonna create me a learning plan or a learning timetable, you need to know when I'm available to actually study. On the other side, I want it to give me an overview of the path, learning plan with subjects and project ideas. I want a timetable, so organize my planning, my study sessions. I want certificates, I want resources, but I also want to know about social media pages that I can follow, you know, to keep in the loop with things, but also keep myself motivated along this journey. So let's just do it. So the first thing we're gonna do is head over to partyrock.aws and get started there. So I'm just gonna type out into this section where it's asking me about what I want to create the thing I just told you, right? The app that I have in mind. And another thing that I was thinking about this is you could use AI to build AI, like or build your AI app, right? Like if you're not quite sure how to construct the app that you want to build in your head, why not write it in a prompt, right? Like why not ask <laughs> one of these chatbots? If I had this problem, how would I create an app on the other side that would solve this problem and then just copy and paste that into this text box here? But boom, we do that, click generate app and off we go. And within seconds, it's going to build our app. And as promised, that's the build section over. In a matter of seconds, you have an AI app for you to get started with in terms of editing. And you can actually stop here and just use it as it is. But I think a little bit of editing and testing is probably good form. So the first thing I'm going to do before I start editing or doing anything cosmetic is I want to test the app. I want to make sure that I'm actually happy with the outputs it's giving me. So I'm going to fill this out like a hypothetical person using my app. As you can see, there's like placeholders and widget names that are just kind of automatically generated based on what it is that we said that we wanted, but we can work on those later. So now I can start looking at the outputs that I'm getting. Am I happy with the path overview? Do I think that is succinct enough or do I think that's detailed enough. Is that what I was going for? Or for example, the timetable, the resources, are these the outputs that I was expecting? Or are these outputs that I think would be useful in achieving my end goal, which is to create this learning pack and this resource for people who are going, uh, trying to get into tech. 
Now I did say that there were some editing capabilities here and I wanna go into those now. The widget title, pretty self-explanatory. If we're not happy with the default one, we can change it. But the next very interesting thing is we can actually change the model that we are using for each of these widgets, right? Which means that the prompts that we are generating, the prompts that we are giving to our AI app, if we're not happy with the model that's being used under the hood, like I said, those large language models that are basically powering this, if I'm not happy and I don't think this one is performing well, I can pick another one. This is one of kind of the perks of AWS Party Rock. You're not just tied to one particular model, you have access to multiple ones. If you're wondering what those bars are in the corner next to each of the models, it's effectively telling you how many credits are going to be used or relative to the other models. Some of them will consume more of the credits that you have and others less up to you. Then you can actually see the prompt that is being used to generate that widget or to generate that output. So if you're not happy here, if you think this isn't quite right, this is where you may want to start editing directly, right? If you think I haven't quite got the output that I want and I don't think it understands what I'm asking for here, refine it, right? Just edit it. Maybe you want some more detail. Maybe you missed some things. You should have been a bit more specific. This is the point and the chance to do that. And as you can see, these little green tabs are where they're referencing other widgets, right? It's referencing the detail in other widgets. So the final part of this section of the edit is actually the temperature, right? It's under advanced settings. And all this kind of means is the randomness of the outputs you're going to get. When this is all the way to the right, it's increased randomness. So the outputs you get may be a little bit like, oh, wasn't expecting that. Right, so it's up to you. You can play around with this as well. The thing about this is you can literally just play around with it, change things up, do it again and see what you get, see if you're happy. Once we're happy with that, we can change things like the title, like the actual sizes of the widgets and the boxes and things like that, more cosmetic things. And then you're done, you're done. You can literally use this app whenever you want or you can publish it and have others use your app. You know, you can post about it on your LinkedIn. You can post about it on your other socials and have other people involved and using your app. Or you can just keep it private if you don't want anybody else using your stuff. And that's it, you've built an AI app. You didn't need to know how to code. The build itself took seconds and I feel like I've delivered on what I promised. If you're interested in seeing more, then definitely subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment and let me know if you play with this app, if you do something, if you build something and actually share the link so the rest of us can see it. But I will see you in the next video.